Welcome to the Fluid Mechanics Lab. So today we're here at the uh, ACE Climatic Wind Tunnel. We've managed to get a Ferrari 488 Challenge Evo car. So what we're gonna do with it is we're gonna do some demonstration testing. We're gonna look at some of the aerodynamic features. We're gonna look at the forces on the vehicle. Specifically at the front of the car, we're gonna see things like where the airflow is redirected through the ducts. We can look at the splitters uh, and the vortex formation. At the rear of the vehicle, we've got the wing there, so we can look at the forces from that. We can look at the vortex formation that comes off the side. And in terms of the side of the vehicle, where there's some ducts there too that are used for things like cooling the brake ducts. In terms of looking at this car from an aerodynamic perspective, we've got a lot of different airflows and we can see a lot of things. So I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with this today. So what I'm going to talk about are wind tunnels as a tool, an engineering tool for aerodynamics. And when I talk about wind tunnels, it's the application of wind tunnels, the different kinds of wind tunnels, how we use them, and why do we use them. And in fact, we use wind tunnels to simulate, for vehicle development, simulate road conditions. But we also use that in conjunction with computational fluid dynamics, a virtual method. So it's complementary of doing virtual engineering to experimental engineering. And there's different kinds of wind tunnels that can be applied. And here at Ontario Tech University and ACE, we have several wind tunnels. Of course, the largest being the climatic aerodynamic wind tunnel. But we also have model scale tunnels as well. So when you talk about vehicle development, you're talking virtual, you're talking the toolbox of wind tunnels, and you're also talking about scale model. So again, a wind tunnel is another tool in the engineer's toolbox. So the air here at ASA is coming through this nozzle, off to my right here, or it's often referred to as a jet, is a laminar flow. So you have to understand when a vehicle is passing on a road, the air washes over the vehicle in a very straight fashion. But here at a wind tunnel, we're doing an experimental simulation. So now the vehicle is stationary and we move the air over the vehicle. As well, we're a climatic aerodynamic tunnel. Top of the nozzle to the bottom of the nozzle is the same temperature. It is the same airflow, it's the same speed, it's the same angularity, it's the same humidity, it's laminar, it's homogeneous. It's the best simulation we can provide for different climatic temperatures of aerodynamics flowing over a test object, which happens to be a vehicle in this instance. So when we talk about wind tunnels, there's basically two main configurations that we're using in vehicle development, and they're a closed return and open return. And here at Ontario Tech University, we have a closed return. And a closed return basically means the air circuit is continuous. It's a closed loop. An open return would be simply drawing the air in from one side, 
flowing it through the chamber and exiting. And that may go into a very large room or it even can draw from the outside and expel to the outside. So the air flows through and is recirculated and it actually ends up in a settling chamber just before this nozzle. It passes through a heat exchanger to get temperature. It goes through a series of honeycombs to straighten that air out. And then it comes across two aerodynamic screens that further straighten that air out. And then it is contracted through the nozzle, squeezed through and comes out in a straight path that washes over that particular object or vehicle that we're testing. When we talk about wind tunnels as well, everybody looks at aerodynamic and, and force and drag and lift, but we also use wind tunnels as well for our thermal management and thermal dynamics. Many times you'll have a separate tunnel that is specifically designed for aerodynamics or climatic or acoustics. But here at Ontario Tech, we kind of have the Swiss Army knife of tunnels. We utilize both the thermal capabilities and the aerodynamic capabilities. And there's a couple ways of using the tunnel. So in this particular tunnel, it's a climatic aerodynamic tunnel. So we have a dynamometer for thermal work, but we also have covered those rollers up and we've inserted a static balance. It's essentially a weigh scale, but it doesn't just measure down, it measures the drag. The other thing is it's a very complex scale, so it can measure forces in all three dimensions, X, Y, and Z, and we can translate moments. So we can get rolls, we can get pitches, we can get yaws, we can get lifts, we can get drags, we can get six components of the aerodynamic forces we're trying to measure. Everybody knows lift and drag, but again, the vehicle experiences other moments as well. We can capture all those in this very simple setup. The issue with experimental air in a three quarter open jet, so it's an open jet here, but the floor is attached obviously so the vehicle can be here. So what happens is there's a small boundary layer that forms. So as the air passes through, it gets the resistance of the wall and creates a boundary layer. And clearly that won't be straight or uniform. So what we do, and off to the right, you can see the yellow stripe at that inside of the nozzle is slightly below and we've got a scoop. So in fact, that boundary layer that starts to grow, we scoop it and draw it down. Now, after that yellow, you can see the vehicle's off to my left, but the, the yellow line's way off to the right. So we have a secondary removal system, secondary boundary layer, and it's a perforated plate. So after that scoop, as that boundary layer wants to start to grow, we draw that air down on a perforated plate so that it doesn't grow. So that we can try on a static balance force measurement system, we can try and minimize that boundary layer close to the floor, which is in fact underneath the vehicle. The actual control of that boundary layer is critical and we're talking about trying to provide the best simulation. So beyond a secondary and a static force measurement system, we are introducing a rolling road, a moving ground plane. So as the air passes over that perforated plate, instead of growing again underneath the vehicle, we're now going to move the floor. We're going to move the road. So the air and the road are going to be moving and the vehicle is on top and that will provide world-class and the best experimental simulation for aerodynamics and force measurement. This vehicle has a carbon fiber front splitter 
And what we'll see when we have the smoke wand is the front splitter collects the airflow here. And as it flows through here, it generates a vortex off the back. This vortex travels along the side of the vehicle, staying low to the ground. And what that does is it acts kind of like a skirt. So it prevents any air from leaking underneath the vehicle. So the low pressure zone under the vehicle that creates downforce can remain in effect. And so we'll have more downforce as this vortex prevents that flow from getting under the vehicle. So we have these dive plates as well, and we'll see with the smoke wand that what these do essentially is to redirect the air up over this side panel. So we'll be able to see exactly where the airflow goes. So it prevents it from coming around the side of the vehicle and it sends it up over the vehicle so it can be used better. So this Ferrari has a lot of interesting features here at the front of the vehicle. We'll be able to see when we have the smoke wand, some of the different pathways the air takes. One of the ones we'll see is that the radiator inlet at the front of the vehicle here sends the air over the radiator to do the cooling for the engine. And then that air is actually sent back up outwards through this radiator hood extractor here. And then as that air comes out, that actually creates a downforce that pushes down on the front of the vehicle. So we've got a nice big wing on this vehicle. It's made of carbon fiber. So the job of the wing is to generate downforce. Uh, and we'll be able to see from the smoke wand why we want it raised up off the vehicle like this, because there's a nice airflow that's up above the vehicle that we can use to generate that downforce. This one has a gurney flap as well. And we see these end plates on the side so we can use the full length of the wing. They prevent the low and high pressure zones from bleeding over into each other. We'll see with the smoke wand as well, it creates a, a small tight vortex off the top and there's a larger vortex off the bottom that will encompass that. And the reason for that is to reduce drag. So we just want that low pressure zone to be farther back from the vehicle so it doesn't pull the vehicle back as much. So on this vehicle, we have a really good example of how air can be utilized for other things other than aerodynamics, such as cooling. So this top duct here, we'll see when we feed the smoke wand through there, this air actually is fed through to the brake duct. And we'll get a pretty dramatic demonstration of that. And so that air is actually used for the brake duct cooling. Normally, of course, in a race, the tires would be spinning but it gives you an example of how much of that air is captured to cool those brake ducts. In the lower duct here, that actually feeds through the intercooler. So that cools the charged air, and we'll see that comes through the front here, and it's fed out the back. So on this Ferrari, we'll be able to visualize the airflow over the top, and it's quite interesting because we'll see with the smoke wand that the air that travels around the side of the vehicle is actually fed back towards the wing to be utilized for more downforce. And as we look at the airflow that comes straight over the top of the vehicle, it's fairly streamlined. We'll see a little bit of separation towards the rear window, and then that air moves towards the wing, again, for more downforce back there.
So the wing on the vehicle is used to generate downforce. And you can think of this like an airplane would have a, a similar type of wing, except when we mount it on a vehicle, it's flipped upside down. So instead of pushing upwards, now it pushes downwards. And that downforce, what that does is, it has a force that pushes the vehicle down against the track. There's a bit of a misconception that having a wing on your car will make it faster. On the straightaways, the wing actually slows you down because it increases your drag. But in the corners, that downforce that pushes the vehicle against the track means you can corner faster so you can take more speed into your corners and you'll still keep your grip on the track. As we increase the angle of the wing, we increase the downforce. But there's a drag penalty, meaning the drag increases as we increase the angle of the wing. To keep the drag low, we keep the wing angle low. So in these runs, we're gonna change the wing angle. And what we should see is at the highest wing angle, we're gonna see the most downforce, but also the most drag. And then as we reduce the angle, each time we reduce it, we should see the downforce go down, but also the drag goes down as well. So those ducts we saw at the front of the vehicle, we could actually see when we used the smoke wand that that air is collected inside of the vehicle and it's used for cooling. So primarily what we're cooling is the engine, so that air will be collected and passed over the radiator, but some of that air is actually rerouted through the brake ducts and so it'll cool the uh, front brakes on the vehicle as well. So when we block the ducts, now we prevent that air from going into the vehicle and being used for cooling. So instead, now we can use all of that air for aerodynamics. And so that enables us to increase the downforce because we're able to use that air to generate downforce, but also because we're rerouting it around the vehicle, instead of having it collect inside, we're able to reduce the drag as well. So the question is then, when would you ever wanna block the ducts? Well, the designers knew what they were doing when they put them there, so they are needed for cooling on the vehicle. So the short answer is, you wouldn't really ever wanna do that, but in a case where you might, for a very short time, need some better performance, and you were sure you weren't gonna overheat your engine or your brakes, you could block the ducts, and you'd get a faster lap because you'd have higher speeds because your drag is down, but you'd also have faster cornering because your downforce would be up as well. So when we block the ducts, what we're gonna see here is that it's one of the few cases where we can increase performance overall. So we'll see the downforce go up and we'll also see the drag go down. So on the Ferrari Challenge Series cars, there's actually a few things built into the vehicle that you're allowed to modify. So the splitter bleed panel is one of those. And so you can actually set it up in a high downforce mode or a low downforce mode. So when you remove that panel, now the air can bleed down and that's gonna result in a reduced downforce on the vehicle. So in these runs, we should be able to see that the downforce has been reduced. So a gurney flap makes your wing more effective. 
So it's a small flap that's placed at the rear of the wing, and what it does is it generates these small vortices, and it helps to keep the air on top of the wing from bleeding over into the air that's underneath the wing. And so because the wing is more efficient, for the same angle, when you add a gurney flap, you're able to generate more downforce. Right height matters because it affects the aerodynamic performance of the vehicle. The lower the right height, the better the performance. And we can also change the angle of attack of the vehicle using the right height.